Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. Today we're going to talk about aging Teslas. The first Tesla, of course, was a Tesla Roadster that was released in 2008. We began working on them in 2012, and we began to observe aging issues with these cars. So this tracking of failure events allowed us to do some predictive analysis not only with Tesla Roadsters, but with later platform cars like the Tesla Model S, X, 3, and Y. With this data, we're able to translate and forecast what these other vehicles may begin to go through as they also age. So anyone servicing these early Roadsters will conclude that they were really prototypes released and pushed into the field before they were ready. It is arguable whether Roadster design had matured enough to be ready for release. The primary unfinished design aspects of a Roadster are, for example, these side scoops. And there's actually one on both sides. This was originally designed to do passive cooling for the power electronics module, but never quite got incorporated or finished. So what they did instead of using the side scoops and finishing that cooling design, they replaced it with a 12 volt DC fan, mounted it fairly low in the car, and uh, provided forced air into the power electronics module to cool the transistor heat sinks. The problem with that design is the fan is low enough to where it picks up a lot of dirt, dust, leaves, and debris. You can see here's an opening here through a mesh and um, requires now that the PEM or the power electronics module has to be cleaned yearly and part of the cleaning process includes removing all of that debris, dust, twigs, and leaves that collect inside that unit. So one of the other things that um, makes this car less than serviceable is this thousand pound battery pack which tucks up inside the bowels of the car. Inside this pack which takes about a day or so to extract properly. Lots of plumbing, you have to remove the suspension components. What you'll find once you crack it open is a number of wear-related components such as fuses mounted on circuit boards, contactors on both sides here, a DC to DC converter, which also has a fuse buried inside it. Had there been a bit more time, it would have made much more sense creating an access port on the top of this pack which is, by the way, accessible from the back of the car, and then putting all of the wear components into that or underneath that hatch. Where this car really shines is in the area of safety and firmware and battery management. Let's not forget that this multi-cell battery design really set the stage for all other EVs to come. This particular pack here, which was the first, of course, that uh, Tesla generated in the Roadster, has 6,831 small form factor lithium ion cells, comparable to the vape cigarette cell. They were able to create a software package that gives this battery an enormous amount of battery management to keep things safe. And this innovative battery design actually allowed this car to go over 200 miles range when it was first released, which was unprecedented for any electric vehicles up until that time. This innovative battery pack is actually loaded with safety features. For example, it uses liquid cooling for thermal management. What they embedded inside this case is a moisture detector in case there should ever be any leaks. They even went as far is installing a smoke detector. Not much different from the type that you have in your home. It is no secret that by 2008, Tesla was on the verge of bankruptcy and getting vehicles, roadsters, into the hands of owners was essential to keeping the company afloat. Fortunately, the areas of compromise were in serviceability rather than in safety and performance. After careful cost accounting, the amount of rework, redesigns, and warranty issues that the Roadster was undergoing at that time, it became evident that the cars were really being sold under cost. Thankfully, Elon remained with the program 
And although he quips often that uh, using someone else's vehicle platform and trying to electrify it ranks up there as one of the dumbest ideas ever, we're all grateful that he continued with it because the Roadster really was the first EV of any consequence and started the electric vehicle revolution. And let's not forget that early Ferraris, worth millions now and highly sought after, often came with prototype design elements such as pop riveted panels, handcrafted brackets. All right, so how does all this translate into what came after the Roadster? Well, Tesla is very good at hiring top-notch talent, retaining them and developing them. And the byproduct is innovation and design and cutting edge technology. Few companies get a second act, but Tesla launched the EV revolution with the Tesla Roadster and then did not stop there. From there, they went into the Model S or the people's car. The Roadster was originally a niche market. There were only 2,400 of them around the planet, whereas the Model S was a far more sustainable and producible car that Tesla actually built themselves rather than outsource it. Consumer Reports recently named the Model 3 as the safest vehicle made. And there is a second and third choice as well. It just so happens those two are also Teslas. The second safest car was the Model S and the third is the Model X. Making Tesla the highest rated car company in the world regarding safety. This lead is not just in safety, it's in performance as well. Let's face it, performance is equally important in what we drive. Because of the inherent power available in a three-phase AC induction motor design, cars like this, family cars fundamentally, are able to compete with exotic cars in terms of performance. In a vehicle like this, the entire family can come along, including the household pet, and still smoke a Lamborghini at the light. So a burning question that we get asked often is, how long will my main battery last in a Tesla? We are actually writing the book currently on the entire battery issue in electric vehicles because they haven't been around long enough yet to give us any kind of a benchmark. What we do have, however, is evidence in the Tesla Roadster that original projections with that mass cell application was around 10 years. Most roadsters now are going on 13 years and still going strong. So some cell failures are occurring in those uh, cars that have been around for 13 years, but they seem to be aberrations. When we repair the uh, battery packs and put them back on the road, they continue to dry for years. This, for example, is a Tesla Roadster sheet. Um, and there are a number of uh, lithium ion cells in each sheet. It's the same design in the Model S. And what we're finding in the Model S is identical to what we're finding in the Roadsters in that there are cell aberrations. Out of 26,000 cars on the road, Model S is in the 2012-2013 range now out of warranty. We probably see a couple a week that are shipped to us from around the United States for battery repair. So again, it is not an epidemic. No one yet knows when the massive daisy chain cell failures will occur, but it is inevitable. Uh, these one time failures that we're seeing currently, again, are just merely aberrations. Once we reach the limit of the cell lifespan and a daisy chain massive cell failure begins to occur, and it will in the Roadsters, of course, first, then the only option will be an entire main battery pack replacement. So what are the financial considerations of a failing electric vehicle? The Toyota Prius was really the first hybrid of any consequence. And um, after they were in service for a number of years, it was not uncommon to have people sell a $6,000 Prius for $500. And the simple reason was economics. The main battery pack was defective and it cost $5,500. So that reduced the value of that car enormously. 
The same is happening to older Tesla Model S's at this point that are reaching the eight year span when they're out of warranty. An out of warranty Tesla Model S customer with a bad battery pack at a service center gets presented one option, which is a replacement. The problem is that main battery pack replacement costs twenty to $22,000. Many of these 2012s and 2013s are only worth $25,000. So some of these customers are dumping their cars for $10,000. Our electric vehicle division, Gruber Motor Company, has demonstrated that a battery pack replacement for a Tesla Model S with a main battery problem is not the only option. These packs at this level can be repaired, just like we're doing with Tesla Roadsters for the last five years. The cost of that type of repair is around $5,000 versus twenty dollars to $22,000, which makes it affordable for a customer to continue to drive their car. The reason it costs so much is because a battery teardown is not feasibly done at the Tesla service center level. Although Tesla commonly repairs battery packs, main battery packs, in Lathrop, California at the Reman Center. To do a main battery teardown requires an enormous amount of tools just to get it apart, and then component level skills in order to isolate board problems, battery management system problems inside the pack, and finding parasitic cells and isolating them. Tesla is working on a more cost-effective battery solution for cars that came after the Tesla Roadster. What that will be is yet to be determined, but simple scale of economies dictate with many more lithium ion cells being produced, costs should be coming down making these main battery packs far more affordable. Part of Tesla's solution may be to outsource this type of main battery repair to companies like us that are skilled and equipped to handle these types of repairs at the regional level. In the meantime, other independent shops will emerge and begin to fill the void. We just happen to be the first ones. It is a problem that Tesla will have to solve in order to avoid a reputation that their cars are throwaway. One other factor is an electric vehicle has infinitely fewer parts and theoretically should have a much longer lifespan than an internal combustion engine car. Fewer moving parts means less maintenance. Elevated maintenance is what motivates most people to get rid of their cars. So owners will hang on to their vehicles longer. It seems that the replacement battery pack issue is really the only deterrent to people keeping their cars longer. And once solved, we should see a substantially improved service life for vehicles. As always, we want to thank you for watching our channel. If you're enjoying our Tesla tech, feel free to subscribe. We'll have many more of these types of videos coming your way. Thank you.